Okay, so uh, this is gonna be 5.7, and what you're gonna find is, is that uh, I'm gonna break this up into two different videos because this is pretty long. It's not, I don't think it's that difficult, but it is gonna be a little bit new, and we're gonna go through this slow, and I don't wanna rush it. So the first part of the video will be done uh, one day, and then the second part of the video will be done another day. You don't have to do both videos at the same time, and I'll tell you that, and I've told you that in class already. So uh, let's just get right into this. Okay, we're talking about the uh, fundamental theorem of algebra today, and this is a pretty important uh, theorem, actually, but it's, uh, it's pretty basic, and basically, uh, let's just get into talking about why the fundamental theorem of algebra is important. So I'm going to read through this. It says, when solving an equation such as x to the third minus 5x squared minus 8x plus 48 equals 0 by factoring, you'd get these factors right here, x plus 3 and then x minus 4 twice. You'd have x minus 4, x minus 4 equals 0. So therefore, your solutions would only be negative 3 from this one and positive 4 from this one. So you aren't going to get a solution of 4 twice. What we do is we call that a repeated solution. And if you count that repeated solution, then the equation actually does have three solutions. Negative 3, 4, and then 4 again. We just don't need to write x equals 4 twice. What the fundamental theorem of algebra says is it says if f of x is a polynomial of degree n, so degree 3, degree 4, anything where n is greater than 0, then the equation f of x equals 0 has at least one solution in the set of complex numbers. Okay? It also says that if, po if a polynomial of degree n where n is greater than 0, then the equation f of x equals 0 has exactly n solutions provided. Each solution repeated twice is counted as two solutions. Each solution repeated three times is counted as three solutions and so on. In other words, what this first one says is that you will have at least one solution. At least one solution. Okay, and that's including complex numbers. Down here, you will have at least the number of solutions that the degree is. It doesn't matter. We're talking about complex and real, all the same. So if your degree is 3, then you'll have 3 solutions. If your degree is 5, you'll have 5 solutions. They could be imaginary, but they might not be. Okay, so that's what we're going to be talking about today. So real quickly, let's go through this example. How many zeros does this function have? Well, what you have to do is identify the degree of this function, which is 3. So the degree is 3. Therefore, we have 3 solutions. That should be real simple. Okay, now let's get into something a little bit more difficult now. It says... So let's find all the zeros of a polynomial function. Well, we're going to go through this the same way we would on anything. But what I want to do is show you. We know that because the degree is 5, that we should have 5 solutions. And we just got done finishing complex numbers, imaginary numbers. Those are the same thing. So I'm going to give you an example here, and you're going to see that part of our solution here is going to be imaginary numbers. But we're still going to go through this the exact same way that we've always done this. So our coefficient here is 1, and our constant here is 6. So our possible zeros and because the coefficient here is 1, we're not going to have any fractions. It's just going to be plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, plus or minus 3, and plus or minus 6. Those are all the factors of 6. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're just going to go ahead and get started. We're going to start trying values. Now, one thing is going to happen in this problem that you have not seen before but is very important for you to understand. But we'll, we'll go ahead and do this first one. So 1, negative 2. There's no third power, so we've got to put a 0. Then 8. Then negative 13 and then 6. So we're going to go through and do this and see if 1 is a solution or not. Bring down the 1. 1 times 1 is 1. Negative 2 plus 1 is negative 1. Negative 1 times 1 is negative 1. And we continue to go through and do our synthetic division. So we got a remainder of 0 here. 
Therefore, one is one of our solutions. So what we can do is we can write x plus, or sorry, x minus one. Don't forget, that's, the, that's what the factor would be. And then what we're left with, we also want to write. So x to the fourth minus x to the third minus x squared plus 7x minus 6. And that's what we're left with. Now, here's one thing that we have not talked about before. And it, we haven't had to talk about it before, but we're going to do it now. So we're going to continue doing synthetic division. We've already done one, but here's the thing. Because of what we talked about above, up here, it is possible to have a repeated solution. So what we need to do is we want to do synthetic division off of this function now with one again. So I'm going to set that up. And if I didn't tell you ahead of time, I apologize, but you want to make sure you write small on this. We are limited on space on this part of the paper. So I'm going to put in one, negative one, negative one, seven, and negative six. And then we're going to go through and do this again, and we're going to see how this turns out. And as you see, we're getting a remainder of zero again. So therefore, what we're left with here is x minus one squared. And then what we're left with over here is x to the third minus, and notice that's a zero, so we're not gonna have an x squared term, minus x plus six. Okay, so that's what we got to from here. So we now know that we do have a repeated solution, and now we're left with a cubic function. So we need to continue, because we don't know how to factor this x to the third minus x plus six, so we need to continue on with our possible solutions. So we will do, and I'm gonna do this quicker, okay? So I'm, I don't wanna waste time, and I don't wanna waste space on your paper, because I already know what it's going to be. Um, but obviously you would go through and you'd do your positive two. If you did your positive two, you would find out that that doesn't work. So then we move on to the negative two, which is going to work. But again, I know that I'm making it quicker for you, but you're gonna to have to go through this on your own and find out which ones actually work. So we go through this, negative, or one comes down, so we have negative two. Multiply, we get positive four. Add those, positive three, and then we get negative six, which again is zero. So that means that x uh, equals negative two is a solution, so now, if we write out our factors, we have x minus one squared, and because x is negative two as a solution, we have x plus two, and then we are left with x squared minus two x plus three. And as I said, we're, we Okay, so now we would need to normally try and factor this. But again, I'm gonna save some time. This cannot be factored. Having a little technical difficulties with the board here. Okay, so what we're gonna do is, since it can't be factored, it can give us a possible chance of, you know, there's a couple ways. That doesn't mean that there's not real solutions to it, but what we would need to do is we need to use the quadratic formula to plug this in. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say this is A equals one, B equals negative two, and C equals three. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna put it into the quadratic formula to see what we end up with, because it is possible that we could get uh, imaginary solutions. So putting this in, remember our quadratic formula is negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So we're gonna plug this in. So we get a positive two because it's opposite of b and b is negative two. So negative negative two will be positive two plus or minus the square root of negative two squared minus four times one times three all over two times one. Okay, so again, okay, so I'm gonna simplify this for you real quick. 
So we end up with 2 plus or minus the square root of negative 8 all over 2. So when we simplify this, we will end up with, because this is a negative 8, that's where our i comes into play. So we have 2 plus or minus i root 8 over 2, but don't forget we still have to simplify our square root of 8. So that's 2 plus or minus, and if you look over here, we have square root of 8 is equal to the square root of 4 times the square root of 2, which ends up being 2 root 2. So I'm going to bring the 2 out in front of the i and leave the root 2 underneath. And now, because we have a 2 here, a 2 here, and a 2 here, those will all cancel out to be 1. So what we're going to be left with is x equals 1 plus i root 2 and x equals 1 minus i root 2 again. The reason why we have 1 is because 2 divided by 2 is 1 and 2, 2 divided by 2 is 1, so those all cancel out to just be 1. Okay, so those are our solutions. Not to mention we also had the solutions from earlier, x equals 1 and then x equals negative 2. So those are the solutions that we have. And remember, that's 1, 2, 3, 4 solutions, but don't forget 1 was a repeated solution, so that gives us 5 solutions. And if we go back to the original problem with that 5, that means that we should have five solutions. Okay, so that's that problem. Okay, so uh, I didn't realize that this problem was going to take that long. The next problem is going to take quite a bit of time too. So uh, disregard what I said at the beginning of the video. What we're going to do is we're going to break this up into three parts, but I do need you to watch the first and second part uh, today. The first and second part will be done now, and then the third part will be done separately. So I'm going to stop this video. It was 12 minutes or so, and then what we'll do is go on to the part two. So part one and part two should be done in the same session, and then part three will be done separately. All right.